city first. And you stop the politicking, you ended the campaigning. And there's some great examples of that happening throughout our history. But unfortunately, recently, the campaigning doesn't stop. That once the other side is elected, people are not coming together. But they're campaigning throughout the governing process. And that's hurting our country. It's putting states in a very difficult situation. And it's gutting resources for our cities. Now, when I met John for the first time, he came to Brockton and we talked about politics. I had won my election as a city councilor. And when you win elections, people come to you and they want to know about how did you win? What are your tactics? Your strategies? He never asked any of those questions. He came and he met with me and we talked about ideas, about people, about solutions. And too often, far too often, we don't have elected officials who are sincere enough or serious enough to sit down and say, I'm more interested in solving problems than I am about winning. So I'd say that Taunton is extremely, extremely fortunate to have John representing you because I've seen him win in private settings. He focused on what was right. And that meant uh, a lot to me. I'm certain that that kind of leadership will take him very far because his leadership is really built on serving you. And that's why I'm proud to have him as a friend. My son recently left last week uh, directly from Brockton to Japan to serve his first tour of duty in the US military. Son, but I was kind of happy to get rid of him. So anyway, um, <laughs> now I can actually get home and have my shoes and my socks and my shirts. All the dads know what I'm talking about. But um, and I asked him about my possible run for state rep, and his response to me was, "Go for it." He said, "Now my job is to make certain that people have the freedom to vote. Your job is to make certain that people have a reason." And that's extremely important. And that's what John brings every day to the job, the reasons. And so I am proud, excited, uh, honored to be here today to introduce to you a person you know all too well, uh, our city councilor, John. Happy St. Patrick's Day, everyone. First of all, before I get into my little speech here, I would like to thank the Lafayette Club, Paul, for a great job on the food. Very small line. Paul, Paul did a great job. I hope everyone enjoyed the carnival. I know I did. It was great. And the cake uh, was great. And also, the special friends that came out today. That means each and every one of you at the table here. Um, I'm very blessed to have you all in my life. And when I ran for city council, I told everyone, just give me a chance, let me get in there, see what I can do. I kept my promise by having neighborhood meetings during the campaign, and I brought it after the election was over. I have about uh, three uh, neighborhood meetings. I have a fourth one coming up to hear the concerns. And let me hold back one more time. Paul, here's the man of the hour right here, Paul. <laughs> I'll go back again and said I held neighborhood meetings, discuss issues, but I wanted to hear the concerns with each and every one of you because I'm in a position to make a difference in this community. If there's anything going on in the neighborhood, we need to discuss things, we need to work together for the best interest of the community. Uh, there's just a lot of issues out there, and if you were willing to work with me, if you have any ideas, say, John, let's try this, I'm willing to listen. That's part of government. You should really listen to the people out there that you represent. You can't just say no when it's no and yes, yes, and just hopefully it works. It doesn't work in that way for me. 
the way it works with me is that I need to have each and every one of you to be part of my team. And then today, just seeing everyone in this room celebrating St. Patrick's Day, I know it's just, it's a great feeling. And the most of all, I need to really say to all of you, thank you for giving the opportunity to serve you on the City Council. It's been always a lifelong dream for me, and it came to a reality. And the only person I got to thank for, thank is on God, gave me the opportunity. You, I'll work as hard as I can for the best interests of my community. But I really want everyone to enjoy St. Patrick's Day today. And today's a special day just for the Irish. And believe it or not, I'm half Irish. People say, you don't look Irish. And I said, well, I'm three <laughs> half Italian, half Irish. But the nose looks like Italian. But, <laughs> but I like Irish food too. But it's, it's nice to see everyone in green. And I also want to say a special thank you to my campaign team for putting this together. And also a little special thank you for my little wife in the corner over here. And also I'd like to thank Todd Triad for one of my first nonprofit groups to be uh, helping me with this uh, fundraiser. What I'm doing is that, just so you can understand, when you run for office, you cannot have raffle items or you can't have a 50-50 raffle because you're running for office and they think that's called gaming in the state level. But I said, you know what, I want to do something back to give back to the community. Let me have a nonprofit group come and join me during an event and all the proceeds that they raise for this goes to the, for them. And this is a way how I like to give back to the community. And this is what you should really do is give back to the community. You should be proud of the community you live in. And, and help out as much as you can. So, Todd Triad, thank you, and I wish you best of luck. And also, a special thank you for Alfie O'Shea. being part of my team and being part of the McCall campaign. And this is not just the one time St. Patrick's Day. We're going to have another St. Patrick's Day next year. So this is our first annual St. Patrick's Day. So happy St. Patrick's Day. Everybody. Um, Alfie, before you um, stop playing again, we're going to raffle off some of the items.